All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're doing a review of a fig variety that's really a standard, and that's why I really wanna talk about it with you guys. It's something that you really should know about. It's a fig called Dalmaty. It's a really popular French fig that's all over Europe. It's all over the United States. This one here in my hand, actually, is called Gayette. So although it does not share the same name as Dalmaty, I assure you that it is extremely similar, if not the same. Uh, this one here comes from a French grower named Thierry in France. And I had uh, purposely tried to look for this fig or acquire this particular variety. Because uh, if you look at some of Thierry's photos um, on his website, Figus de Monde, you'll know that, uh, or you'll at least see that, the fruits team seem to be a little bit smaller in size and they seem to have a better shape uh, than you would typically find on Dalmaty. Uh, because Dalmaty, although it is very oval shaped, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, it is quite large. I mean, this fruit here I'm holding in my hand is a main crop. Typically, you'll see the Brabas really often. You'll hear about Brabas that are like 200 grams. That's huge for a fig. I don't know how much exactly this weighs, but I would guess it's at least over 100, maybe 150. Um, so although I thought that this particular fruit would be a bit smaller and probably have a little bit of a better shape to it, and therefore probably would, would do better in my humid climate, in, uh, you know, in terms of rain, in terms of splitting, we talk all about the shape uh, and how important that is. But on this particular tree this year, I did not have many fruits. I only had about four fruits. There's two left here that will ripen probably in time before these trees totally defoliate. We are at the end of the season, but because we have so few fruits, um, a lot of that energy is being directed into those four fruits. Now, if I had the tree covered in fruits top to bottom, and there wasn't so much of a surplus of energy directed into such few fruits, uh, it would be more evenly spread out throughout the entire crop and the size would be a lot smaller. So that's, I think, why this fruit is so large. And typically you'll see that with Brabas as well. I mean, that's why you get such large Brabas sometimes is there's so much energy that gets directed into very few Brabas. And that's how you get a fruit that's like 200 grams. What is the average weight of this fig? probably somewhere in the 70 to 80, maybe 60 gram range, if I had to guess. So although it's not massive, it is big. Um, and it is really, I think, just Dalmaty in general is an underrated variety. Typically in these climates like my own, it is a very hardy variety. Um, I know Herman too, you know, a really well-respected grower in New Jersey, just 20 minutes from me, has really good success growing Stella, which is another Dalmaty type in the ground. There's people in Canada growing this fig. This is a very hardy variety. And, and also because of the shape, it really does lend itself super well to avoiding at least major splitting. Um, I've noticed that it does split, although it does have that really awesome oval shape that we look for. The fruit typically doesn't hang in the way that you would like to see. The neck is not necessarily so pliable and it's very stiff and it holds the fruit like this. I'll show you in a second here. So the fruit is in the, in the air kind of sideways rather than hanging down like this. You want the eye to be facing towards the ground, certainly not to the sky. That would be the worst thing uh, possible. So in my opinion, it's, it's good because of the size, but it doesn't hang well. Um, you know, I don't know if the skin is either negatively or positively contributing in that sense either. Uh, but what I will say is that if it is going to split, it's not going to turn into some, to some like crazy monster. You know, that typically some of these, these fruits, these figs, uh, the, you know, it's an inside out flower and all those flower parts are then exposed when the fig really explodes and you see all of the, uh, the inside flower parts. And it, it kind of looks like a monster. Some people will you know, kind of comment or it doesn't look very appetizing. Um, so here's the tree and you could really, you know, identify this variety so well by the leaves. 
when you see a large green fruit like this with a red interior and you have these long finger leaves to them, this is just, it's just down with you. There's no other, you know, it's, it's such an easy way to identify this variety. Uh, it also tends to be a bit ugly, gets sugar spots in humid climates. And then the fruits themselves, as I'm showing you over here, they're, it's quite large. But again, the way that they hang is kind of sideways. There's another one down here. This will give you a better idea. Excuse the camera work here, guys. I'm trying to navigate. But here's you know, a good idea. That, that's kind of how it hangs, too. It doesn't really droop down like you would see with other fruits or in other fruits. It's just got such a stiff neck. And that's a good representation of the size right now which in my opinion is, is really massive. I mean, even just in its green stage like this, it's still really large. It'll get bigger, but uh, it's just a huge fig. That's, that's the other way I guess you can really identify it. And then if I look at, you know, here's a different variety over here. This is Moro de Caneva, and you can see as it's ripening, it's starting to droop, right? The stem has a long length to it. The neck is a bit long and it's pliable, so it tends to really hang a lot better and, you know, just therefore not really split all that often. So, uh, you know, that's kind of my tree. This is a really shady spot of my yard and, you know, therefore we don't get a ton of sun. I'm not getting a ton of fruits. It's been rather difficult growing figs in this shady location. Um, they don't really perform well right here. They don't grow well here either because the soil is quite dry with this peat moss. So these trees, I've had them here for a couple years and it's just a little difficult to get them established. Uh, but once this Dalmaty or this Gayette becomes established, and probably next year I imagine, it just takes a couple years longer. You know, eventually it'll find the water, it'll find the nutrients it needs, even though this peat moss is really disturbing that process, uh, it'll eventually get there. You know, it'll, it'll take over. I mean, figs have that amazing ability to send their roots out um, and find the nutrients and water they need. So, uh, you know, this is a quite a vigorous variety, but just looking at it, at least right now, you never would have guessed. You know, um, some of these other trees in this planting are uh, a little bit taller than it. And maybe you could say they're more vigorous, but I know for sure that Dalmaty is a definitely a better grower. Uh, it's quite hardy, as I mentioned. It's rain resistant. It has a large fruit and the fruits are tasty. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is a really great tasting fruit that I think doesn't get enough respect. Now in the fruit itself, I want to show you this to you actually before I eat it, is a ton of honey. I, other, I already ate the other half, by the way. I got ahead of myself. But you see that nectar and that syrup or honey or whatever you'd like to call it? It's in the, the void there at the bottom. This really is very sweet. And uh, it also creates a really awesome, thick, dense pulp, uh, dense texture to it. Um, and for my money, I think this fruit's really underrated for this particular reason. Now, as it ripens more and as it gets more ripe, it's going to be even more honey, more nectar, more of that thick pulp and it's even better, we're almost, we're like a, tomorrow's our frost pretty much, our first frost. So we're at the very, very end of our season. It's cold. You can tell I'm wearing a hat. I got my jacket on. So not ideal conditions for this fruit, um, but I would venture to guess, even just as it is right now, it's very good. But if it was, you know, let's say August and this was ripening, it'd be a really good piece of fruit. Um, yeah, so even that, that bite down there is so, so good. I mean, it really does remind me, it's like on the level of the thickness of a col de dom, super underrated fruit. I had no idea, you know, I grew Dalmaty for a couple of years and then it never fruited because it, un unfortunately, some of these figs just need a bit more light than I have. And I always thought that maybe Dalmaty was just similar enough when I didn't know much about fruits, much about fig varieties, 
I thought Dalmatie was typically an Adriatic fi uh, fig, which is similar to Green Aishia and, and GH Adriatic, Battaglia Green, all those fruits that we grow as well that I have, you know, Verdino Giacomo and Verdino del Nord from Tatiana, uh, Prosciutto, you know, all those are Adriatic types similar to the Green Aishia. But just because it has a green skin and a red interior doesn't mean it's in that category. This is so vastly different, actually. And for years, people were just very misleading, trying to get information out of people about this fruit. No one really knew what they were talking about in, the, in years ago when, you know, a lot of the information that is available today, it just wasn't back then. Um, when fig hobbyists were really starting, and there wasn't too many people who really definitively were telling me that this is different enough from another fig like I mentioned. Um, so it took me a couple years to really grow this and I was never really too keen on growing it. Uh, what a mistake because this is such a great fig. It really is. Overall checks almost all the boxes. If it didn't split or it hanged a little bit better, I would say it's one of the best. You know, it's a keeper for sure. Yeah, you can find this anywhere. This fig's not very rare. You find it in a lot of nursery catalogs. You can find it very cheaply on, on Figbid. You know, this particular one, Gayette, is probably gonna sell for a, a, a bit of a higher price just because of how rare it is and who it comes from. Uh, but if you wanna just grow Dalmaty, you wanna grow Dayette, just grow Dalmaty or just grow Stella or just grow any of the other ones. There's so many of them. Leon's Montenegro is another one. I know Mario grows one uh, called uh, Oregon Unknown, his number two, I believe it is. Mario number two. I know Pino in Canada has one that he sells that's really good. Uh, that my buddy Joe in Toronto, I think, also grows as well. So it's, it, this is a fig available all over the place. Um, but it's a standard, and that's why I thought we should cover it. I would say, actually, this fig, if properly ripened, will easily be like a four or five maybe even a four, eight, and really compete. I think it'll compete with the best tasting figs I grow. So uh, yeah, there it is. That's Dalmatie or Gayette. We'll talk to everybody soon. Take care, guys.